Hello, Manitoba. Bonjour, Manitoba. Welcome a bienvenue to our first ever Canadian Agricultural Literacy Month virtual farm tour. I'm Kira Rowett and I work with agriculture in the classroom. We're pretty excited to go on a field trip with you today. And since you can't come to the farm, we're gonna bring the farm to you in your classroom. We have classrooms joining us from Nipawa, Steinbach, Winnipeg, Brandon, Plum Cooley, Dougal, Laurier, Morden, and throughout the province. Teachers, you can say hello in the Zoom chat. It's great to see where everybody's coming from. You can tell us where your class is. If you and your students have any questions for Harley, you can pop those into the Zoom Q&A feature. I'll do my best to get as many of them to Harley as possible. Since our theme this year has been healthy foods from healthy farms, you'll get to learn about how Harley looks after his farm. In fact, if you've seen the sticker sheets we sent you, you'll also see Harley and one of his daughters as one of our featured farms. At the end of the tour, we're going to have a draw for four classes to win one of these happy drawstring bags from the Manitoba egg farmers. And each of them comes with a microwave egg cooker. Harley and his wife, Brooklyn, and their two young daughters, and there's another baby on the way, farm together with his dad. Harley is a fourth generation egg farmer in his family and they just built new free run barns about two years ago. So let's go on our virtual school bus and head out to Rosenort where Harley is waiting for us. Harley, good to see you. Harley, we we're good. Can you, you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. Hey. Want to welcome everybody here to my farm simplicity of a little cell phone. So I hope you guys have an awesome tour. Please ask lots of questions. Kira will then send them to me and I'll try and we're outside here in Rosenart, Manitoba. I'm about 35 minutes uh, behind me here. You can see our nice sign for Siemens Farms. Um, as Kira said, we built this whole facility brand new about two years ago. We've expanded to three barns. So if you look down over here, which we're going to walk into. Arm here, we are strictly just eggs. We have about 25,000 laying hens, which is a lot of eggs and a lot of hens. And we have right now about 15,000 pullets. And when I say the word pullet, what that means, that is a bird that is growing before she lays an egg. Because at 19 weeks old, so if you can think of a baby, when a baby is only 19 weeks old, that baby hasn't done much in its life yet. At 19 weeks old, these pullets become a laying hen because that's when they start laying eggs. So in this barn behind me over here, that's where we're going to get the little baby chicks. They come in, they're so cute, they're one day old, they come in there and we're going to raise them in there and train them how to be a laying hen. At 19 weeks old, then to these barns behind me. Away, nice and flat, but we, we do not farm them. We rent them out to other farmers, but there on those fields, we're going to produce the canola, the corn, soybeans, wheat, all those different types of crops. And those are very important to us farmers because us farmers need those types of crops to feed our hens and the feed I'll talk about a little later is one of the most important things for our hens. Hardly. So I'm going to get you guys to follow me. Yes. 
I was just going to say, let's head into your barn. I think maybe the wind is creating a little network problem. And so you're a little bit choppy out here. But um, uh, sounds good. Could, yeah, yeah, if you head on in, barn. we do have a question that's come in from a teacher. And I'd like to ask teachers, if you're sending in a message, can you say where you're sending it from? So I can uh, let Harley know. We have a question. Are you one of the biggest egg farmers in Canada? In Canada? Oh, I am not the biggest egg farmer in Canada. I know a few of them. We actually here in Canada. A couple other farms. Harley, can you hear us again? Yeah, I can hear you guys perfectly. Okay, perfect. So maybe you could just repeat what you had said. Just as you were heading to the barn door, we lost your audio. And so you indicated you're not the largest. Oh, no problem. Maybe you could tell us how, no. many, how many hens do you have? Yeah, so there are huge farms all across Canada. On our farm, we have about 25,000 laying hens on this location. We have actually two other farms uh, across Manitoba, one in Niverville uh, and also one by Blumenort. And those farms have a lot of birds as well. So in total, we have around 80 some thousand laying hens here in Manitoba. In Canada, there is lots of big farms that have over 100,000, but the average farm size here in Manitoba is around 14,000 laying hens. And there's 172 egg farmers like myself across Manitoba. Great, thank you. I got tons of questions coming awesome. in, but why don't you take us, you can start walking us over so we can see the birds. Somebody, we've got a question from Brandon. Perfect. They wanna know how many hours a day do you work? How many hours a day do I work? Well, it all depends if everything goes well or not. <laughs> uh, here on the barn, we wake up. Uh, we usually come to the barn around 8 o'clock, and that's when we start our chores. Um, we have one other worker who is doing an awesome job at videoing right now. Um, we, me and him, we work together in the barns here. It usually takes us to lunchtime. Uh, to get all our chores done, the eggs gathered. After that, we'll do little miscellaneous projects, a lot of cleaning. Uh, we like to keep things clean, safe for the hens. Um, so yeah, it takes, if everything goes well, usually about five hours of just the barn work. And then otherwise we do a couple other things. So Great. yeah, so I'll keep walking here. And you can yeah, see we, we are we inside the, the barn now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why you guys came here, not to see me. <laughs> So one important step that I want to talk about, when we go inside the barn, I was just outside. So we want to make sure that the shoes that we are going to put on are only for this barn. Because we want to make sure that these birds stay healthy and that we don't take anything from outside, any bacteria, uh, anything that's going to make those birds sick. And then we bring it into the barn. That would not be good. So I changed my shoes. And I also always put on another cloak so that anything that's on me doesn't get inside the barn. It keeps the birds safe because my job as a farmer is to make sure that those birds are safe and healthy all the time because they're our livelihoods and we want to make sure that they are happy hens. So if you guys want to come with me, we'll go inside the barn. Great. So now you can see we're inside one of our barns. Behind me here, you can see there's many birds. I'll open up the door. Don't worry, they will not go out. <laughs> so you can see a shot of all the birds inside the barn there. So this barn holds around 14,000 birds right now. You can see they're all white birds, but we do have a couple of brown birds. And I wanna talk a little bit about the differences is a brown hen is going to lay a white egg. I mean, sorry, a white hen is going to lay a white egg and a brown hen is going to lay a brown egg. And what 
actually is the main reason for that is the color of their skin. But their skin can only be seen by their ear. So when I look at the birds and I see the color of their ear, I know that that is going to be the color of shell she is going to lay. Because in other countries in the world, there are white chickens, white feathered, I should say, that have brown earlobes. So that means she's going to lay a brown shell egg. But because these birds in here, there's a couple of brown ones, like I said, are all fed the same type of food or what we call it feed, those eggs are going to be the exact same nutritionally. There's going to be no difference at all because they're fed the exact same thing. So maybe here, my videographer can come. We can see there's a brown chicken right here on the floor. You can see a brown one there and also a white, a couple of white ones there. So you can see the brown bird right there. Harley, I've got I've yes. got a question here for you. It says um, it says how many times how many times a day or a year do hens lay eggs? That comes from Minnedosa. That's an awesome question. So what we want from a from a farm point of view, we have a standard, and we try and get each hen to lay around three hundred and forty five eggs a year. That's kind of the standard that we like to go by and which works out to about one egg a day. Um, they take Christmas, Thanksgiving and Easter off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they, uh, the younger the bird, she has to get used to laying that egg. So it takes a couple of weeks to get that egg to come every single day. But after they get into that routine, then they will lay that one egg every single day. So on our farm, we can't know if that hen's laying an egg or not because there's so many of them and they all lay in the same spot so what we do is we want to see how many eggs that we collect all together and then we know how many birds there are and then we know a percentage this many percent laid an egg today so those are the numbers that we like to go by okay and here's a question from a grade two class in minnetonas in uh minnetonas Sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing your, your area properly. And they wanted to know how many eggs then are produced every day on your farm. So every day on my farm, we gather around 2,000 dozen. And because the number is so big, we always count by dozens. So that's by 12 eggs. So if you take 2,000 times by 12, that's about 24,000 eggs a day. So it's a lot of eggs lot you gather them eggs. every single day. Yeah. Do you Tons collect them in baskets, Harley? <laughs> <laughs> that would take a very long time. Uh, a little bit later in the tour, you'll see our egg gathering system and you'll see how we gather all the eggs. And we can gather about 2,000 dozen eggs in about an hour and a half. That's Amazing. quite impressive. Yeah. Amazing. We do have a so, question from another school. They want to know what the ratio is of your brown chickens to your white chickens. So the white so, hen has got a few questions about that. On our farm, we are strictly uh, white egg farmers. Reason for that is that's the demand in the stores. We usually don't have any brown chickens at all. In this barn, I got 30 of them. And that's <laughs> actually an interesting story why we have 30 of them. So... Um, back in March of last year, we got chicks for this flock and we ordered 30 brown chicks because in September we were supposed to be at Egg in the Classroom's Amazing Egg Adventure where school groups like you guys come out and at those events we usually have some brown chickens and some white chickens. Due to COVID, we were not able to have those events so we did not use those chickens for that. So we decided to put those chickens into our barn for now. So that's why we'll have 30 of them scoundered around. You can see one behind me here. And that's really the reason. But normally we will not have any brown birds in our farm because it's a lot harder when we gather the eggs. We have to separate the brown from the white for them at the grading station. So it's way easier if they're all just one type of bird. Okay. Well, Harley, we have a few questions from students wanting to see an ear of a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any way that we could see the ear of a chicken? I can try and get you guys a bird here. Just one second. Just going to calm her down. Yeah, some people have asked how tame the birds are, how easy they are to handle. She looks so, pretty chill. 
she's pretty chill. So do you see right here how her ear is really, really white? Yes. That tells me that she's going to lay a white egg. The brown birds, I doubt I'll catch a brown one. They're a little bit less of them. Those ones there are going to be a little harder to see. It's going to be just a little bit darker of a tinge. Okay. Well, we could definitely see the white ear. So that's yeah. amazing to see how you can tell the difference. So there have yeah. been questions. Do you name any of your feathered ladies here? <laughs> I get asked that a lot. So this one's Beatrice. No, I'm just kidding. I, we can't <laughs> leave, uh, leave the ball. They all look almost exactly the same. Uh, but we do actually label the flock. So all these birds have a certain number and we have a special permit for them. And I think this flock is LH300182. So that's what I call all these birds. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hen here. So if you can see her, you can see she has her comb here, the red part on top. What the comb is for is that's how she's actually going to um, release her heat. So when we're in gym class, or we're running outside, us as humans, we are going to sweat to keep our body at a good temperature. What she's going to do is she's going to release that heat through her comb. That's why it's red, because there's lots of blood flowing through there. Um, you can see here, she has nice wings. She's going to try and go away. You can see her feet. Her fingernails are nice and short. That's what we want to see. This is a really good, healthy bird. You can see she has all her feathers. She's nice and happy. So I'm going to let her go back into her home. I'm going to put her back. And then she can go away. So here's so a I'm question gonna... I've got yeah. for you from some classes. They, how can you tell if they're male or female? Do you have that any is... roosters? <laughs> that is an awesome question. All these birds in here are all females. And why that is very important is because if we would have roosters and female chickens or we call hens and the roosters are the males, there's a chance of our eggs becoming fertilized. And when that egg is fertilized, that means we would get baby chicks. And that would not be good if we would ship them off to the stores and you guys would oh, crack open your eggs for breakfast and you'd see a baby chicken there. I think we'd get a lot of complaints. So <laughs> all these birds in here are all females, they're all hens. But to see a rooster, the main difference is, is that rooster is going to be a lot bigger, is going to have these uh, tail feathers in the back that will come up a little bit more, and the head will be a lot redder. And also, you can hear them coo, cockadoodle do, and you can hear those roosters do that, and then you know that you have a rooster in your barn. But here, we have all just females. Okay. That's great. I've got a question here from a class in Winnipeg at Ecole Varennes. They want to know what comes first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> I always say that the chicken had to come first, but we're egg farmers, so we've been trained to say the egg comes first. <laughs> but no, I think the chicken came first, but yeah, it's a good, that's always a good way to put it for sure. Okay, great. Well, keep showing us the setup that you've got there because we've got some awesome. questions on your setup. For sure. So behind me here, as uh, Kira said at the start, is this is a free run aviary barn. In Manitoba, there's many different types of housing chickens. Um, so you'll have ones that are kept in um, enriched housing. So it's big colony rooms, um, a little bit different setup than this. Then you'll have birds that are just raised on a floor. The, the floor is wide open. And then you'll have birds that actually can go outside. There's little doors on the side of the barn. They're allowed outside. Of course, and the temperature is nice. But this system is called an aviary free run. And the free run portion means, of course, they're allowed to go wherever they want. The aviary portion means you have this type of system here. So I'm going to get my camera guy to follow me into the barn here. So the main couple of the main things about the aviary system that I want to point out is, of course, where are they going to lay their eggs? So behind these red curtains, you can see the birds are in behind there. They've all laid their eggs already this morning, but they just like to go in there and stuff like that, hang out. 
but in here is where they're going to lay their eggs. So in the morning when they wake up, they're going to go in behind here and they're going to lay their eggs on the special mat. When they lay their eggs, those eggs are going to roll underneath onto this belt. That belt then is operated by us ourselves and we can then gather the eggs. The nice part about this is those eggs never come in contact with the bird. So they can't peck at it. They can't get it dirty. They can't get their toenails into the egg. So the shells stay nice and hard and that they're good eggs. Also, Party, yes. Question here um, from a Winnipeg school. How long does it take the, take the hen to lay the egg? So when she goes in there in the morning, how long does it take? So usually they're gonna be in there about for five to 10 minutes, something like that. Um, but the more that they do it, the older the hen, the quicker it's gonna be because they get used to it, right? Their bodies are used to laying the egg. It's always different at the start. They, it takes longer for them to learn how to lay eggs. It takes longer for them to, for their body to have that natural um, type of way how to do that. So the more they do it, the better that they get at it, the quicker it does. So yeah, about five to 10 minutes, but they like to lay the egg when they wake up. So the lights in this barn come on at 3 a.m. in the morning. And then by five o'clock, most of them are starting to lay their eggs. And because there's so many of them, they all have their own pattern and what time they want to lay their eggs and whose turn is it to lay their eggs. So usually by eight o'clock, 8.30, all the eggs are laid. And then that's when we can come in and make sure that the barns are all good. So we'll actually come in and we'll walk these aisles a couple of times a day to make sure that if there's any eggs laid not in the nest, if any of the birds are caught, make sure they have their food, their water, make sure everything is good uh, so that they can live a good, healthy life. Okay, great. So um, I have a question here. It says uh, from Winnipeg, do chickens sleep? Do chickens sleep? Yes, they do. So another cool part about this system is there's lots of perches. So you can see here, here's a bar. Up top, this has a special lip and over here has a lip. So at night, we have trained all these chickens to actually jump up onto the system so that at night there is no birds on the floor and they are all perched on these pipes. So what they do, they'll grab on, they'll lock, and then they sit down and they will all be asleep. So at night when I walk in here, there are birds lined up all the way along the top and the bottom and on these birds all asleep. Their eyes are closed and you can walk and it's a little bit creepy because they're all peered over you like this, but there's no birds on the floor. So yes, they do sleep. And do the birds ever fall off their perch, Charlie? No, that's another cool thing is when they lock onto those perches, you can tip them and they don't move because it's like they've locked their bones to hold on to it very tight. Okay, so I've got yeah. a question here from Lyndon Lanes and Brandon. It's a grade three class and they want to know, do your chickens ever fight? Do they fight? So back, um, I would say in the early 1900s or the 1800s, there was things called cockfighting. They would have chickens fight each other. That was part of a game. Now these chickens are bred so specifically and so scientifically to make sure that there is actually no aggression in their genetics. So we make sure that they are nice and calm. We make sure by doing that with different lights, by their feet, adjusting it so they're a nice calm bird so that they are not going to be aggressive towards one another, which was an issue with chickens earlier on. But these birds, they're very calm. As you can see behind me, they nicely just move around and they're in really good attitudes. That's great. Okay, yeah. well, if you've, we've got some questions here about the food, and I know that you were planning on showing us some food, or maybe you want to tell us something about the manure that you've got there on the ground. Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about both. So here we got a feed trough. So there's a couple of feed troughs throughout the system, and these feed troughs have their feed in there. there there's a chain in there, has all these different types of feed. You can see the chain, and that will all bring them fresh feed a couple of times a day. So when I get out, I'll show you a little bit what the feed's like. Um, there is different uh, types of crops all in there. There's gonna be wheat, there's corn, soybean meal. Um, there's actually gonna be oyster shells for calcium bits uh, to make their shell nice and hard. So there's lots of different types um, of grains that go into that feed. 
And that feed is very, very important because whatever we feed the hen, she puts into her eggs. So actually a couple of times in a month, we have a guy come out from where we buy our feed. He's called our dietitian, and he will adjust the diet of the hen depending on her weight, how much food they eat, how much water do they drink, what size are the eggs. So he will make a special meal just for these birds. So you can see behind me here, there's a pole with a couple of birds standing on it. That's our scale. So birds jump on and off of that. And that allows us to know the weight of those birds. You can see it there, there's a pole, so. And then on the ground here, we aren't just stepping on concrete. We are stepping on manure. I got so this manure, you, Harley. Yes. Yes. How much, I've gotten a few questions. How much does a bird weigh? How much approximately when they're ready to start laying their eggs, when they leave the pullet barn, how much are they going to be weighing? So when, when they move from the pullet barn, they're about 1500 grams. Right now, we're going to try and keep that bird to around 1700, 1720 grams. So 1.7 uh, kilos. Okay. Great. I just wanted to ask the weight question before we head into the manure. Now you can tell us about your manure. <laughs> so on the ground here, we have this manure. And you can see how it almost looks like sand, but it's really dry. It's all in pieces. And that's because we heat the floor of this barn. So it dries out the manure. And those birds are actually going to pull it apart with their feet and stuff like that. And it dries it out. So it makes really good fertilizer for on different farms and stuff like that. All of our manure gets transported to another one of my brother-in-laws. He has a farm about half an hour away from me. We haul all the manure there once a year and we spread it on the field because that really helps the crops. It's great fertilizer and it gives back to the earth to create that good sustainable uh, soil structure. We also have manure belts where you can see they have not pulled apart yet and we'll run those belts every couple of days to go into that manure shed and then we can keep uh, cleaning it out from that point. Okay great well I did have a question from a teacher here that wanted to know um, if the size of the chicken affects the size of the egg. Yes it does so the weight of the bird the heavier the bird the bigger the egg she's going to want to lay because her body is getting bigger. So that means everything is getting bigger than her. So one challenge for us farmers is, is the older the hen gets, she wants to lay a bigger egg. But that's an issue for us because she is still putting the same amount of calcium or shell on her small egg from her big egg. So when her eggs are bigger, those eggs are a lot more fragile. So we adjust our food and our feed rations to make sure that that egg stays at 62 grams. That's a large egg here in Canada. We weigh our eggs to make sure it stays at that number so that it's good shell quality. They aren't gonna break when they get shipped. And that also it's easier on the hen because then she doesn't have to produce such this large egg. That's great. Thanks, Harley. I have had a few ask the question of how, how long will you keep these chickens? So how long do they lay, uh, are, is their lifespan? So when we get the chick, remember a day old chick into that other barn I was telling you about, we'll get the chicks in there. Those chicks are going to stay in there for 19 weeks. At 19 weeks old, that bird is going to be moved over into this facility and they're going to lay eggs in here for one year. The reason why we keep them for one year of laying is because after that, that shell quality that I was just talking about starts to really deplete. So there's going to be more cracks. They're going to be harder to ship. And also it's getting a lot harder on these hens. They've laid so many eggs that their bodies are being hard on it. So after that, those, these chickens are going to get shipped down to a place in the States and they'll get processed for dog food, different things like that. But they are not used for human consumption because these birds are just for laying eggs, not for your chicken McNuggets or different things like that. That comes from a different type of chicken. Okay, that's great. We're ready to go see the feed. Awesome. So I'm going to head on out here, guys. Move all these birds here. Oh, Harley, there's a question here from Plum Cooley. Do, do the chickens get dirty? Do you need to bathe them? How do they keep so, them clean? 
I have never cleaned or <laughs> washed a chicken before. They like to stay nice and clean. So what they actually do is in the morning, after they're done laying their egg, they all hop onto the floor. I know I said there's manure on the floor, which doesn't make sense, but they will dust bathe on the floor. And it looks like they're on their side, frolicking around and fluffing up all their feathers and pulling out all the bad feathers. And then they hop up then they flap out, everything falls out and then they stay nice and clean like this. So oh. it's quite impressive how they do it, but that's also a good question. Thanks, Harley. So here we got some feed. So you can see in the feed, it is all rolled. So it's all in tiny particles, but you can see there's some corn in there. You can see some wheat chunks. Um, there's some soybean meal in here. So it's all ground up. So it's easy for them to eat, easy for them to digest. Um, and we wanna make sure that this feed always is, is stored safely, that our bins are nice and sealed. They don't get water. And we make sure that we give them fresh feed. So once a week, the feed truck will come here and he'll give us new feed every single week. And that will last us for the week. Great. And how much would one chicken eat in a day? So one chicken is going to eat about how much I just put in my hand. So about 200 grams, 230 grams a day on there. Great. Yeah. They also, another really important thing is going to be their water. So their water you can see is here. We want to make sure that they're fed good water because they're, if you think of an egg, an egg is mostly contained of water. There's lots of water, a lot of liquids. So their water is very, very important. So here in our farm, we are fortunate enough to get our water straight from the town. So it's not coming from a well from a pond. It's coming from the same water that I get to drink in my house. So we don't have to treat it at all. It's nice, good water for them. They get to drink it. Um, it's available to them 24 seven and we get to meter how much water they drink. So they're going to drink around 200, uh, sorry, 170 to 200 uh, milliliters of water a day. So if you think of like a can of Coke, it's about just under halfway that's how much water they're going to drink a day because most of that has to go to the egg but then we still have to be able to um, have them put the water into their system right so you have to think every time they eat half of that has to go to them for living but half of that food has to go into the egg it's the same as water great thanks harley so maybe uh, there's there's more questions here that, uh, that we're not going to be able to get to. We got hundreds of questions here for you, Harley. How about you uh, take us out and show us, show us where your eggs are going to go when they come out? For sure. I'm on three here. So now that I'm out of the barn again, I'm going to change my shoes, take off my cloak to make sure that I don't bring anything else in anywhere. Awesome. Perfect, so I will get you guys to follow me up here. Have you ever had any chickens escape from the barn when you, <laughs> there's, a, there, there's a question here, have they escaped? They have not escaped our barn. Uh, you should see the reaction of my videographer behind me. No, that's an awesome question. We make sure that in that barn, there's lots of netting. There is lots of mesh so that they stay in that area. And that's very important, again, because we're talking about the biosecurity to make sure that they're in a controlled environment so that we can keep them safe, keep them healthy, that they have good food available, good water available. So, no, we make sure that they stay in that system. So, yeah, that's an awesome question. So, behind me here, you can see a lot of the eggs here. So, when I was gathering eggs this morning, we didn't finish gathering. We left a couple of the eggs here on the belt for you guys to see. So you can see there's a conveyor there with all these eggs. This location, we gather from both of the barns. So the barn that I was in, there's another one exactly like that, just further down. 
And what we do is we control what barn we want to gather at what time. It's very important that we gather them separately because both those barns are different ages because we only put from the pull-up barn that whole flock into one barn and then we grow for the next barn. <laughs> so we gather each barn separately. They're also fed different feed. So we keep all those numbers separate. So right here, we got eggs from the one barn. The eggs come in. This machine here, we call it our packer, is going to pack the eggs, put them into trays, and then we're going to stack them on the pallet. So if you're good at the Kira, am I good to start it up and show you guys how it works? Yeah, start her up. We want to see awesome. how this works. Perfect. I will get my videographer to turn on the machine, and you guys will see all the eggs work. So you can see them, they're nicely stacking into the trays there. What it actually does, it makes sure that all the eggs are at a point down. So you can see there, it missed a tray, so it'll automatically stop and it'll pack all the eggs nicely on there. So are all the eggs the same size, Harley? They are not all the same size, but us ourselves, we do not weigh the eggs individually. What we do is we will weigh this entire pallet of eggs that's beside me here. And that will give us an average of how much the eggs weigh. When they go off to the grading station where they get the eggs all ready for us to go into the store, there they will weigh all the eggs individually. And then they will sort them, whether they're large, extra large, jumbo, smalls, or medium because it actually matters about the size of the egg is on the weight, not of how tall it is. Okay. So yeah, so you can see here, this is my trusty pallet jack. We have a scale on here. So once the pallet is empty, I mean full, sorry, we will jack it up and then we will know the weight of all the eggs. And then I have a program on my iPad that will convert that all to the exact uh, average size of the egg. All right. So where do you put all these eggs, Harley? How, how often do they pick up the eggs from your farm? So they're going to pick up all the eggs from my farm twice a week on Mondays and Fridays. So I'll get you guys to follow me into my cooler. So once these eggs are gathered and we're on to the next barn, we're going to put them in a separate room. That's like a big fridge. It's very cold in here. It's going to store all the eggs for us. Wait for the door to open up here. So behind me here, you can see all the eggs. And these are all the eggs, plus the other stack that's outside that we've gathered since Monday. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're Thursday. So this is three days, three days worth of eggs here on our farm. So each stack is 900 dozen eggs. So if you take 900 times 12, I don't know what that number is off by heart, but that's, that's a lot a of eggs. That's a lot of eggs, Carly. <laughs> so, so yeah. We have, uh, we've just got about five or six more minutes. Maybe you can head over and show us all the brains behind uh, how you keep everything running in the, in the barns with the temperature and all the computer and technology. For sure, I will show you. So on our farm, we are very technical. We make sure that everything is really up to what should I say industry standards we're very like we care about how much um, feed they're going to eat down to the gram so we like to track all that information and we don't do that manually we have computers to do that for us which is nice so I'll lead you into I like to call exactly like Kira said the brains of our operation so in behind me here is the mechanical room. You have all these different systems behind me here. That's what heats the floor, like I was talking about, to keep that manure dry. Beside me here, you can see all the different water systems. So you can see the water comes in. We have a special machine that knows how much water they're drinking. Um, it's gonna filter the water, make sure it's gonna sense that there is water flowing. So if there's something wrong, there wasn't water going, I would get an alarm. And this is all very, very important for us. All this information, 
all goes to these controllers right here. So these controllers we call our Maximus. So you can see here, Maximus controllers. These are our brains. So we have a touch screen here and it's gonna show all the barns. So you can see I have one barn up right now. I can go to the next barn. It's gonna show me what's all running in the other barn. On this screen, it's gonna tell me what fans are running, how fast are they running? It's gonna tell me the temperature in the barn. It's gonna tell me how much the birds weigh. It's gonna tell me how much they drink, how much food is in our bins, how much food did they eat? It's also gonna give me alarms. So if they're not eating enough, they're gonna let me know. If, um, if uh, let's say it gets too hot in the barn, it's gonna send me alarms saying, it's too warm in the barn, please go fix this. Um, a big thing that this system is going to do as well is it's going to adjust the ventilation, which we like to call it, which means the temperature in the barn. So this will control all the fans and also open up all the intakes to let the fresh air from outside in so that those birds get nice fresh air, they're nice and warm, or in summertime that there's lots of wind to cool them down. So this system controls all of that. There are special sensors throughout the whole barn and also outside that this thing does that all automatically. And what's really cool is everything on this screen, all these switches I can control on my phone or my iPad, wherever I am in the world. So I'm always at the fingertips of my farm and I always know what's going on. That's amazing. So you could be sleeping at night and your birds could send you a message and say, it's getting too hot in here. Yes, and, uh, I have had that happen before. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wonderful so harley if you walk yourself over to your egg sorting there we're going to go dual screen here Perfect. we're coming to our our 45 minute cutoff this has been an <laughs> it's been 45 minutes already <laughs> yeah this has been an absolutely amazing um gift that you've given us on this on this trip to come to see your to see your farm and uh we just appreciate you answering so many questions. We've literally got hundreds more questions. So you better turn off your email for this upcoming weekend. Um, well, I was, I was going to say, if you guys have questions I did not answer, please follow my Twitter at Harley Siemens or you can go to my website, SiemensFarms.ca. There's a chat in there. Please feel free to send me as many questions as you want. Or if you need my email, you can get in touch with Egg in the Classroom. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to send yeah, out all that information. Yeah, we're not going to give out your email, Harley. There's so <laughs> many questions here. You'll regret offering to answer the maybe, questions. Maybe I'll set up another email account just to get these questions. <laughs> um, we have sent out to uh, teachers, we do have another uh, Manitoba egg resource on our website that might be able to help answer some of the general egg questions. Um, and I know that you've got on your website just a, some nice photos and things like that of your farm. So teachers, if you're interested in showing anything more to your classes, uh, you can then be able to do that. So, um, I do want to draw my four names here before everybody goes that there each student in your class is going to win one of those little backpacks and a, uh, a little egg cooker. So I'm going to pull these out. Okay, we've got from a cold Crescent View school in Portage La Prairie, Stacy Hewitt, your grade two class is going to get some little backpacks. We've got from La Berriere Crossing School in Winnipeg, Neve Skelton, your grade five class is going to be getting some backpacks. <laughs> we didn't rig this, I promise you. Brenda Cronelson from Rosenort, your grade hey, three Brenda. class. <laughs> Take some backpacks. That's fun. <laughs> Okay, and from King Edward Community School in Winnipeg, Jane Graham, your class is gonna be getting some little backpacks. So I just wanna say on behalf of all the teachers and on behalf of us here at Ag in the Classroom Manitoba, Harley, 
And Mitch, thank you so much for opening your farm to us today and for giving us some insight into how you look after your farm and your birds and the environment and how you produce healthy food for us all to enjoy. So thank you so very much. We appreciate no, it. Yeah, thank you guys for coming along. Hope you learned something, had a good time. I could do this for four or five hours at a time. Uh, hope you guys got a little bit of insight what we like to do here. And yeah, it's our livelihood. And thank you for supporting us. Wonderful. Thanks, Harley. Thank Matthew you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.